Today we're setting up Windows 11. Now, I saw a recent Linus Tech Tips video, which I'm going to refer to here, and I'll actually leave a link to Linus's video. Uh, the method he used was just kind of a tried and true, older method, a little slower than what I'm going to show today. Uh, quite a bit slower compared to what we're going to be doing. Uh, he did have a fantastic tip at the end of that video, which talked about auto unattended uh, XML files and how it would automatically bypass all the stuff during the install. That is essentially what we're doing. And uh, I'm picking all that information for you. So this is going to be very easy. First off, download Windows 11. Now, in his video, he talks about using the installation assistant. Don't do that. About a year ago, Microsoft introduced ISO direct downloads. Just select the edition you want, click download now, select your language, and then just click download. This is the easiest way to download ISOs directly from Microsoft.com. Here's the link right there at the top of the page. Download your ISO and we're off and going. Always get the official Microsoft ISO and then you can launch into my utility. Now, the Windows utility has been around for over, geez, going almost six years now, actually five years and some change. We have almost 8 million downloads and over 200 contributors. Uh, I'm constantly working in this every single week. Uh, latest update was just uh, this past week, and I'm about to release another update. Usually, I look at this at a bare minimum once a week and update it at least usually once a month. So, a lot of time and effort has put in this, both me and many contributors over the years. And I'm going to address the first, first comment I know I'm going to hear on this thing, and that is just use Linux. And a lot of uh, my audience uses Linux and a lot of it uses Windows or some both. Um, and it's kind of funny because on the contributors note, a lot of the contributors that have come and gone over the years, well, frankly, they just stopped using Windows and they do move to Linux eventually. Uh, and I've noticed that kind of happen. Like OG Merck, I haven't seen too many PRs from him. He still pops on Windows every once in a while, but I know he's primarily a Linux user now. And uh, I was talking to Martin as well. He's done a lot of pull requests and now he has moved to Linux as well. And he still does PRs and he did a lot of updates this past month, but it's kind of funny to see the ebbs and flows over the years. And, and it's good to see that back and forth. Know that Linux is an option, but it's not a Linux video. I just thought I'd make a little footnote here for you. So first uh, launch it. You can either launch it directly using the PowerShell method where you just copy this command and paste that into a terminal or PowerShell with admin, and then it will launch the utility. Or if you want, you can donate directly and buy the $10. There's a little link probably down below you could use as well if you want an executable. Both methods give you the same thing, and this version is free. Just thought I'd mention it. This does help support the project though. So now that we launch it, I want you to come over to MicroWin. And in MicroWin, there's a couple different options. There's this download ocsdimg.exe from the CTT GitHub repo. Man, that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> essentially, this is using Windows ADK, which is a deployment kit from Microsoft. That's this guy right here. Now you can download and install this directly from Microsoft. The only reason I download that one executable from my repo is I've copied it from the ADK and it's only like a, a couple hundred kilobytes where this entire ADK is, I, I think, about two gigs. So it might save you some time, but if it does fail, you can always just manually install the recent Windows ADK. Should something change in the future, everything I'm showing you is open source and directly from Microsoft. So we'll uncheck that. And you can say get automatically the ISO and hit download. It'll try and download it directly from Microsoft, but since we already have our own ISO, we'll go ahead and select that. Now, upon loading the ISO in your prompt that you used to launch or it launched directly from the executable in this case, uh, you'll see all this information in the background. You know when it's done because you'll be presented with this screen down on the bottom. This whole section right here is not filled in automatically. This is actually blanked out until you load the ISO. So it does take some time to mount and load this. I just wanted to show all the manual methods first. Now, a couple things here, inject drivers. This is if you know how to manually load drivers. Most people watching this video will not. So I recommend unchecking this. This is the instructions for using the download or the injection of the drivers right here, just for advanced users. 
For today though, we're just gonna import drivers for the current system and we're gonna also include vert IO drivers so we can use this in a virtual machine or if we just directly reinstall this through a USB drive like you're probably gonna do, I would just say, hey, if it's using the same system, just, just use the drivers here. And that way, when you reinstall, you don't have to go and hunt and find drivers from the manufacturer's website or install custom tools. I'll show that a little bit, but for the most part, just click this and we're off and running. Uh, now the custom user settings, I'm gonna just put my username as subscribe and blank the password. I want my system to auto log in and just throw me on a desktop. Now in Linus's video, he did talk about the out of box experience or OOBE. Uh, we're gonna be skipping all of that. Uh, we're gonna just be doing an all auto unintended XML. Now, as I've said at the very beginning, thousands of installs, all I did with my auto unintended is pick same defaults that Microsoft should choose when installing the system instead of all the bloat and garbage that they toss on a modern system. I kind of rewind the clock and how Windows 7 was when you installed it directly from Microsoft, that's how I made Windows 11. No system settings are removed. Everything is stock. So that means Microsoft Store is there. Defender is there. All the stuff is there just at same defaults. It's not going to be sitting there prompting you all the time. So let's start the process. We're going to name this micro win and then i'm going to date this 65 uh 2025 and this is going to go ahead and make that iso this will take some time usually on a good system this will take about 10 to 15 minutes to build out so let's give it a whirl right now in the lower right here you can see it is 147 my time and we'll see how long this takes on my system now during this process you'll notice certain things being removed from the system uh, old school Internet Explorer, which is still used a little bit uh, throughout uh, certain um, things like Copilot, also are removed by default. And uh, OneDrive and many other features that kind of just bloat up a new system are also being removed. Uh, many of the provisional downloads, alarms, and most Microsoft Store apps are also removed during this section, meaning you have to kind of pick everything uh, as it is instead of having all these junk apps, as I'd call them, because most people do not use them, uh, I would recommend just picking your own, which we'll go into. Now, in Linus's video, he used Night Night, which is kind of an older tool I used about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, these days, I use Winget uh, with my toolbox, which uh, on reboot, you'll see. The cool thing about my utility is it runs once, and then after you close it, it's not installed on your system meaning every time you run it, it has to basically go out to the internet, see if there's an update, and then launch, and then that's it. It just runs in current memory, and as soon as you close it, it's gone. And that's how I think most programs in Windows should work, especially programs that go and get drivers and fix things up. So uh, we're about five minutes in, a little over five minutes now, and uh, it should be close to finishing up. You should notice that this method does work a little faster than NT Lite and many other ISO tools out there. We did a lot with actually multi-threading and, and getting and kind of pushing what's available in these Windows tools. Uh, this does use DISM and many other built-in Microsoft tools with your system. So we're not using any external uh, executables. Everything is directly from Microsoft. And that's kind of how I like to keep it as these are the tools we use in business. Also, another notable thing that happens, there are certain registry tweaks we do. In Linus's video, he touched on disabling TPM and other uh, older bypasses. All that's done by default. And frankly, if you didn't and weren't using my utility, Rufus has those built into them as well. Since my tool is doing all of those on stock defaults, because why wouldn't you? There's kind of no point in them even existing. Uh, that's just the, the stock setting. So no matter what system you're installing, you don't ever have to worry about customizing TPM or removing any of these uh, artificial limits from like a processor or anything like that. All that's done by default, so you can use this ISO on any system. All right, there we go. Just a little hair over um, 10 minutes for the whole creation of the ISO. But that includes all our customization, all our drivers, all the modifications you could possibly want on a stock 
image of Windows directly from Microsoft. So now that we have the ISO located right here on our desktop, we're gonna open up Rufus and write this to our USB drive. Now to download Rufus, you can get it directly from their website, rufus.ie, or you can click install from the Windows utility. Either way is fine. Uh, go ahead and launch this utility and then select your USB drive, select your ISO from the desktop. It'll say standard Windows installation. Do not put Windows to go. That would be very bad. And then go through. All right, we're good, we're good. Uh, one thing, it might prompt you for any Windows 11 setup customizations like removing TPM or any of those. We already took care of all that because we have our own auto attended on this ISO. So we don't need to do any of that. So we'll just click start. So uncheck all of that. Remove requirement for Microsoft account, remove TPM, uh, create all this. This is essentially an unattended, which Microwin comes with directly. So we would just hit OK and then write it to the disk. And then we're going to reboot our system and start the install process. All right. Now, in the actual installation, you're going to notice a couple things. You're going to have less options here. So we're just going to go next, next, agree to delete everything. Next, I'm going to say don't have product key and then select your unallocated space or delete any partitions that are there. Just know you will erase everything on the drive. So be careful with this. And we're just going to hit next and install. Now, the beauty of this is it will go out and install everything. So you shouldn't have to have any more things to the desktop from this point forward. Let's see. All right, here comes the first reboot that took about two and a half minutes for the full install on my system. Now, I do anticipate this going through. Now, normally in, in a stock directly from Microsoft, this is where it kind of starts bloating the system up. And really what it's doing here is installing the drivers for the system that we already preloaded. We're gonna get one reboot here usually, and then it'll sit there and kind of set up the desktop for you. And here we go, roughly about five minutes start to finish from when we hit next, uh, that last one and we got the blue screen. Uh, we'll let this finish getting ready. I'll show you what the stock micro win experience is like. All right, and this is our desktop. You notice not too much is going on here. We have one quick little install we do with MicroWin at the end. And this is pretty plain Jane. You still have the store, you still have Defender, you still have all your regular security, but just a base local account. Everything else can be set up and customized from here. First thing I always do on a fresh install is come into Device Manager, look for any missing devices. As you see, since we imported all our drivers, they're all right here. So this is looking good. The next thing I always do on any new operating system install is go back into settings, go down to Windows Update. From Windows Update, hit check for updates just to verify that you got all your updates in here. This is another thing I like to do uh, on any system because before you start bloating it up or anything like that, you do that, and as you see, hey, yeah, there's still some updates here, even though we just downloaded this ISO. It's just the nature of Windows. All right, now that we have all our drivers are installed, we double check that, we did all our updates. Now let's install some stuff on there. As we see, we got a really good starting point for our system. Instead of night night, we're just gonna launch into the toolbox. Since I don't have the executable or anything here, we're just gonna do it through PowerShell. And the beauty of doing it this method as well is Winget will manage the, the program. So you can auto do like a mass upgrade of all the programs that gets installed this method. It's just a better way of installing and managing your packages in Windows. So let's say you pick your browsers, pick your communication. If you're gonna grab Git, go ahead and grab it. Uh, document viewers, if you wanna grab any of these. You can see it's very expansive and we're always adding and changing things in here as uh, things get uh, added to Winget. But pretty much everything is here that you need and it's a vast selection. Now, one thing I will note, let's say you're having problems finding certain drivers for your system, which happens all the time. I do recommend Snappy uh, Driver Utility. So if you look here, we go to S, Snappy Driver Installer, or you can just type Snappy and grab it here. Let's clear that out. So now we have Brave, Git, and Snappy, driver install utility, all selected. 
and then we're just going to say install and upgrade and it'll go through and install these three programs you will see kind of a selection of hey what else is doing in the background it should go through and install and update these and once uh wind gets updated which it'll do automatically it'll go ahead and start installing our applications and there's all our install so automatically installed all of those guys so next thing and the last thing i want to leave you with here is just a couple standard things so i usually just say standard look through here if there's anything i like to change on top of it um, if you do debloat edge that's for people that don't use edge typically if you do use edge you probably don't want to debloat it because uh, it will limit uh, some of the changes because there's a lot of telemetry built into edge uh, meaning they phone home to microsoft all the time if you're okay with that that's fine but don't just click all these and get crazy. <laughs> Other big things I like to do is, I'm not a big fan of notification trays, but it will disable the calendar. So don't just go crazy. Uh, I always set classic right-click menu. So I really enjoy the old right-click menu from Windows 10 and before. So I always put that. If I'm dual booting Linux, I always enable UTC since Microsoft's a little bit crazy. A lot of times they default to local time, which is held on the computer itself instead of a standard time like UTC. And every other operating system in the world uses UTC, except for Windows. And then the rest of this, I kind of leave. Um, OneDrive doesn't get installed with MicroWin, so you don't need to remove it. If you have Razer devices and you don't want to use Razer stuff, again, the big thing here is this guy right here on your tray. The idea here is don't have it full of crap. That's the biggest thing we do. Like every probably once or, or twice every, every couple years, I'm reloading Windows. And you don't want to bloat this up. You don't want to install a bunch of manufacturer applications that run all the time. You don't want that Asus Army Crate crap or MSI's uh, giant driver suite. All that stuff costs you because it's constantly running, it's constantly phoning home, and it's constantly checking for updates that probably will never get anything. And it's not worth doing. So that's why I say this is what you want to do. We'll hit run tweaks. And for this one, I like to kind of come to the command line here just to kind of look exactly what's doing. It'll say each step of the tweaks process. And this just kind of cleans things up after like a big install. You might want to rerun tweaks. Any kind of feature update to Windows, you're going to re want to rerun tweaks. But after this, we're going to close out a utility. We're not going to need it again, probably for six months to a year unless Microsoft drops a big update on us tomorrow. But usually they don't, they save those big updates for maybe once or twice every six months. Updates, a lot of times I just grab security updates. If I'm on pro, this is pro systems only, it's just kind of limits some of those updates. So it's not gonna sit there and constantly churn out updates. Uh, it just does more sane defaults. So we're pretty much done here with this set of the tweaks. Uh, other things I like to do on the actual taskbar, I kind of clean all these up, just unpin, unpin, search menu. I don't really like having that. So I go to taskbar settings, search box, I hide. And then I kind of like the old school on the left for my tray icons. So under task behavior, I change from center to left and uh, pretty much everything else is stock. So at the end of the day, most systems I configure look something like this. Minimal start menu, just with some of the stuff I install, not loaded down with a bunch of garbage. And from a performance perspective, uh, usually about 120, 130 processes. Yeah. So that's about par for the course. This is not de-bloating. It's not an extreme anything. It's just, hey, Microsoft, this is what Windows should look like. I shouldn't have to do what I just did. But again, Microsoft's lost, lost the plot. <laughs> or maybe, maybe, maybe they ah, let's not ugh, just do this or use Linux. I'm good with either, but uh, hopefully this helps you out uh, and, and gives you a good spot so you can have a good experience with Windows because the stock experience is just absolute garbage. And with that, let me know what I forgot down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.